Kardahi from the publisher Deep, sea, Deep Silver. Please give him a round of applause. Morning. Excellent. Hello. I am Anthony. Yeah, and I'm Isaac. So we're uh, super happy to be able to show you some of uh, Dead Island 2. Um, what you're going to be seeing is a video of the demo that you have playable on the floor. So uh, obviously, it's a lot more fun if you actually get your hands on it. So be sure to go check it out. We're right across the balcony thing. Yeah. So. Um, I'm going to mention that it is a pre-alpha build, so everything is kind of a work in progress. But uh, yeah, we're going to join uh, some co-op uh, gameplay here in uh, the Los Angeles area. So let's check it out. So here we are in the Hollywood Hills. You can see our player is playing as uh, one of our classes, the speeder. He's joined by two friends here. This guy on the left is the berserker class, and there's another speeder here going into the electronic store. So what you're going to be seeing here is uh, pre-alpha. So there might be some little things here and there, uh, but it should give you an idea of what we're going for. There's also going to be two additional classes in the final game, which we haven't shown yet. But uh, so here, for starters, uh, we put in two little uh, objectives in the demo. Um, first one here is to get some electronic components to um, get your first modded weapon, which is right here, the electric machete, which he should shortly make good use of. Here they're battling the, the thug enemy who's uh, the resident of the electronics store. Notice that while our player here was gathering the electronics, his friends were keeping the thug distracted for him. You know, just, there's been uh, a lot of work being put in to um, try to ensure there's as much uh, of the effects of your attacks that uh, show up on the enemy. So by the end of getting electrocuted and fried all over the place, the thug just was burned to a crisp. So that was like an example of the modding system, right? You had a machete, managed to get an electric mod on your machete to make a shock machete. In the real game, it's going to work a little differently. For the demo, we wanted to make it like really nice and uh, easy, so you just pick up the resources. In the actual game, you're going to find recipe blueprints, you're going to find weapons, and you're going to be able to like craft the, the weapon you know, that suits your play style. One of the evolutions compared to the older Dead Island games is that this time around you won't need to go look for an actual workbench to do all your crafting or your weapon repairing. You can do it on the fly, but obviously the world doesn't stop and wait for you, so ideally you're going to want to find a nice little secluded place or have a friend keeping your back safe. And here that's what we're doing. Right? Uh, our buddy here was collecting gas from the gas station. It's quite a noisy thing, pumping gas. So. The other two players were defending him so that he could do that. And now he's got a really awesome flammable axe. Which he will demonstrate right now. So the, this kind of event that took place at the gas station where because you're arriving somewhere or doing noise, etc., zombies start streaming in. It's just one of the ways that we tried to make the, um, the whole world of the Island 2 a lot more dynamic with um, things happening all around the place, and um, it's very strongly linked to uh, how seamless we uh, pushed the multiplayer component of the game. <clears throat> so this time around we'll be uh, going up to eight players uh, that can play together in the same world. Um, and so as you're going to be playing around, you're going to maybe hear gunshots in the distance and as you walk there you're going to see that there's another player who's uh, having some trouble handling some thug like earlier etc and you could just join up with them there's no need to group no anything you just you know meet up and say yeah i'm going to help you and start bashing zombies with him keeping his back and then he's wanna, gonna want to return the favor this kind of thing so 
So you can also use the environment quite nicely to your advantage here. That gas canister managed to set the whole garden on fire. So for the more classic stuff, obviously, we've added newer weapons, we've added new zombies, uh, there's crazier and more diverse um, uh, crafting um, blueprints. Um, this is really taking the whole concept of Dead Island really over the top. Here the players found a branch saw, so it's a little different from their machete they were using earlier. It's got longer reach, uh, it also does some uh, pretty powerful damage. Good at chopping off limbs. Obviously, we did not compromise on the classic goreness of the series. So like we said, this is just a little part of uh, the Los Angeles region. We're going to be traveling uh, quite a bit around California and what you're seeing here, um, which we restricted just for the demo, represents maybe 10% of what you could actually do um, in the whole Los Angeles area. And we're also going to have San Francisco and some other places. And a bit later, you'll have a very nice view of just how vast the world is. And we didn't just make it big, but we really try to have events take place all over the place, little stories that you're going to encounter as you're going through the major story arc of the So technically she's not supposed to be that tired. <laughs> it's, like I said, pre-alpha. <laughs> So we really tried to open up the whole sandbox, you know, have fun, run around experience. So right here you could go into any of the houses, start uh, raiding the candy drawers, all of that, you know, finding all the collectibles to, to craft or repair later on. And we really embraced this time around the craziness and over the top, um, dimension of what the island is about. We realize what players really dig about it is just like bashing zombies in the most crazy ways. So there's going to be even more of these moments where you can just launch one into the stratosphere. So now the guys uh, have called you on the radio to say, hey, we want to have a party. They want to have a karaoke party. Thing is, karaoke is pretty noisy. You can hear it at the top of the hill there. They ask. Mind, uh, mind taking care of the zombies for us while we have our party? So now you're going to see like a whole load of zombies trying to get up that hill and you've got to defend them. So what the player is carrying now is at this point, because it keeps changing every month or so, my favorite weapon, which is the uh, Home Strike, a uh, crafted monstrosity between a bowling ball and a baseball bat. Ooh. And it's got a pretty cool special move, the zombie launcher. I guess you've seen it a couple of times already. If you do like a swing in the right combo, the zombie goes flying. If that zombie's on fire, we set whatever he lands on fire as well. We're anticipating some kind of, you know, emergent gameplay is really. Uh, one of the modern things nowadays, we're imagining lots of players are just going to be lining up in front of a horde of zombies and trying to see who punts them the furthest. Looking forward to seeing some YouTube videos on that. So things are starting to heat up. A couple of thugs have come by, joined the party. When you get this kind of combat with like a whole bunch of enemies plus a whole bunch of uh, these like harder enemies, you kind of got to work together, right? Because that thug can do quite a lot of damage, but if you distract him, set him on fire, 
make them electrocuted, gets a little easier. So this is kind of one of the ways where choice of what you want to do as you're playing through the game is really important. Uh, here, even though the event is activated for all of the players that are present, nothing forces you to, you know, stick around or etc. Players were just roaming around, checking out some of the houses, taking out some of the zombies, and then here, out of necessity, the big guys come, so they start working a bit more together. And as you're going to be playing through the game, especially if you decide to play it um, online, uh, a lot of what you're going to be able to do in the world will be down to what you feel like on the moment. Uh, do I feel like going um, into this part of town on my own? Uh, or do I feel like joining this group of guys who's trying to do one of the big events? Or am I going to try and uh, reach this helicopter that just crashed and has a big treasure but that only one person can pick? So that would lead me to be in a situation where I'm going to be fighting against the other players instead of with. And again, you're never forced to do anything. It's all about what you feel like playing with at the moment. Here's a... What you just saw is the fury attack of the Berserker. So every class has a fury attack. Uh, which allows you to do just crazy damage and uh, over-the-top moves for a while. Yeah, the Berserker's Fury attack is pretty cool. You can kick a zombie, uh, so it goes flying. But what's really special about it is if you aim it right, you can kick that zombie into some other zombies. They all like get knocked over. Maybe if uh, you know they're electrocuted at the time, the electrocution spreads. At that point, he just kicked it over the roof, though. So yeah, the, uh, the party's over, and uh, the zombies didn't crash it. So if you were to uh, go up to the bar, you might find a pretty cool reward. Or you're at least going to have, uh, there's my nice view coming up. And yeah, so as you can see, we've just explored a very, very small part. You can go all the way to the coast. Um, so obviously we're bringing back vehicles so you can you know, not have to run on foot. But yeah, here's a little just sneak taste.